Oh, okay. Okay, we are um, starting a little bit early. Um, not, we're not actually starting till three o'clock, guys. So, um, you know, it's totally cool if you are hanging around. This is really just more to <laughs> get the ball rolling and, and see if we have any questions. Um, and also we can talk about the new sort of look, Keep Productive as well, because I feel like that's a nice starting point before we roll into the uh, exciting um, webinar content that we have today. So um, today's been a fairly big day for Keep Productive on YouTube, uh, really exciting. And uh, obviously we've been spent a lot of time, uh, Roy's been spending a lot of time on the new look. So that rolled out today. We have a video explaining about the sort of concept of it. Um, I'm really excited uh, because it's that sort of step forward uh, and as over the next week or so, we should have that sort of brand rolling out uh, across the board. Um, so if you're just joining this chat, feel free to say hello in the live chat um, and uh, introduce yourself. Um, and if you have any Notion specific questions for this webinar, then that would be really wicked as well. Um, I've got my cup of tea, so uh, this one should be quite exciting. It's an opportunity for you if you you, you know, you've got any side projects or you may also have any, um, you know, personal website needs. Maybe you're just coming out of uh, college or school or looking for a new job or anything like that. And you want to be able to have some form of website um, for people to be, you know, accessing, whether that's the bottom of your email uh, signature or whether it's like actually posted on Google and you slowly want it to become ranked. Um, then that could be really cool for you. So uh, yeah, well, if you have any questions or you just want to say, hey, feel free to pop it in the live chat. Um, I think this one's going to be a fun one today. Uh, let me know if you uh, can hear me all okay and things like that, because I just want to make sure. First time using Zoom for um, this sort of thing. It's also the first time we're uh, doing this on live uh, at YouTube. So if you haven't joined the Facebook group yet, which is where we sort of kicked everything off, um, you can join it in the comments, the, the pinned comment of this YouTube video. Um, the great thing about the Facebook group is it has so many people in it that are like uh, real wizards of Notion. Uh, we've also got uh, Alex who put together a great wiki of all of those posts. So if you go in and you're like, where are all these great posts from the amazing history of this Facebook group? You can find it. That's where we also post regular Notion events and, and also meetups get posted there. So if you're like interested in um you know checking out if there's a meetup in your area um a couple of us um Torren, uh jonathan i'm actually gonna have a chat with jonathan he's one of the notion consultants and i've said to him like whether we can do a bristol which is in the southwest of the uk which like seems really uh rare to have a notion meetup but it could be pretty cool right so uh yeah i mean two videos today on <laughs> key products it feels like it might be too much but um, you know, as you can imagine, this is a good opportunity for you to get your Notion answers, uh, questions answered. Um, let me know in the comments or the live chat whether you're actually using Notion actively, because um, that'd be great to hear, because obviously some of you might be might be looking at it, might not be looking at it, um, or might be using, say, Evernote. And we'll see uh, who actually is actively using it. Uh, we've got some good examples today as well. So we can show off um, Carson has a, an amazing um, Notion account uh, that, you know, we actually shared in the arcade video. I don't know whether you can add. Can you add, create a highlight video? Nope. <laughs> I'm trying to work out all this, um, what this does. But what I mean is if you're looking, if you're watching this and you're like, um, looking at like useful videos on Notion. We did a video on uh, Notion use uh, at Arcade, which is uh, a experience that um, they've set up uh, and Carson Jones gives us a great tour around that one. So I'll oh, getting some questions in is Anthony. Uh, awesome to see you, mate. Um, Anthony's put, using Notion personally and for my strategy team. Uh, I thought you were, That's, uh, that is absolutely awesome to hear. Um, Adam, never heard it until I saw the notification for this stream, really. See, that's really surprising because, like, it's mad how many people are discovering Notion, but actually maybe you'll get some insights to what it is today. Maybe it's not the best webinar to actually <laughs> start with, but 
Uh, we do have some useful Notion stuff, Adam, if you want to check it out. Um, Ivan posts all his notes in Notion. He's a big, big fan. He loves Notion. Um, what else? Uh, Duong, I, you know, I'm going to butcher everyone's names in this live chat, you know. Uh, I met some situation that Notion's temporarily down in a few minutes. Do you think it's safe to keep your content in Notion or is it more safe in OneNote slash um, Evernote? Um, I haven't heard, there was, yeah, there was, uh, I think last week Notion was down a little bit, but I think these sites go down all the time. So, you know, there are some flaws. Actually, we got a video next week about that sort of concept. Um, so maybe that should address that, Duong, um, if you're following here on Keep Productive. Tom, currently using Notion. Uh, that's awesome. Great to hear. It'd be great to hear how you guys are using it as well if you haven't posted that. So Tom, feel free to put, pop that in the, the chat. Um, I'm going to make sure I keep uh, an eye on time. We're about nine minutes from starting, guys. So if you're re-watching this, then you can feel free to sort of like rewind forward to about 15 minutes in. Um, for Can, um, hello. Thank you for letting us know about uh, Notion. I'm a paid member now using it daily and completely replaced OneNote. Okay, that's interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, like a lot of people have gone from that free tier to that paid tier. Um, I'm more than happy to do more Notion videos. Thank you, Fulkan. Um, Sven uh, popped uh, daily usage for personal business lecture notes for my students and managing nonprofit company, community. Um, that's awesome. That I'm interested, do you have a uh, workspace for all of them, uh, Sven. That'd be interesting. Uh, Michelle Penny, um, been using Notion long enough to be impressed by it, but not so long that I keep forgetting how to do everything. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, like Notion is one of the biggest learning curve applications um, currently. It's, it's actually really crazy, but you know, it takes time. And once you, it's one of those apps that like, I remember people used to talk about that, like Evernote when they started, they were like, the more you invest, the more you get from Notion. So it's it's pretty it's pretty epic application once you set it up. And when you watch like Marie Poulin's videos on it, you're like, oh my god, this is uh, ten out of ten use of Notion. Like I haven't even got my own area set up like that. Um, I'm truly far behind um, in that process. Um, Torin, yeah, I was just mentioning you, uh, another uh, Southwest based individual. Um, yeah, and it's great to have that because it, I was like, there's no in the, people in the Southwest using Notion, surely. Uh, so that's so good to hear. Michelle, um, you've sort of explained it a bit more. You're currently using it to build a client onboarding form um, and a social media account review template. That's quite a cool idea is having an onboarding for a client because they could pop all their information down and and maybe even get inspired himself. And you also said you're using it for a social media account review template, uh, which is easier said than done, but sticking with it as I think I'm more of the problem. Uh, sometimes you have to get out of the way of yourself and just sort of like work out how to do it. And once you've learned how to do it, you can replicate it. And then the database templates in Sign Notion are really, really exciting. Um, Torren, um, at the moment, uh, I'm mostly using Notion for my courses. Only a recent user uh, with a student account uh, still learning about it. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's one of those things that's just going to continually, you'll, you'll just be learning for a little bit of time. But once you do get there, it's going to be good. Um, Sven, you explain more about how using it. I'm actually running them from my personal account. Okay, so he's using one per workspace account. I'm actually a bit confused on how workspace work. A, as a separate workspace means it's a separate account with block limits. Yeah, each workspace has block limits. Um, I can sort of explain that hopefully today, um, something that you might find valuable. Um, I'm gonna take a few more of these because we're only five minutes away from starting guys. And then we'll jump into the sort of, you know, routine content. Again, if you're if you're watching this back, then feel free to, you know, give it a little bit of a you know, skip forward <laughs> to about 15 minutes in. So that's when it should be starting. So uh, Andy put, what is the best Notion formula tutorial, please? I can't find any good references with examples of usage. Thanks, Francesco, would love from Russia. Awesome to have you. Uh, it's amazing how the internet works, isn't it? Um, yeah, formula hasn't really been covered a lot. Um, 
you know, I'll try and put out a video on it or squeeze a little module into the course about it because that's something that we I haven't touched on and I need to be touched on. Um, and Torren finally put, I'm wanting to get in to building a second brain using Notion, especially as I have issues with my first brain. <laughs> yeah, it's totally true. Like I have issues with my first brain as well. Uh, it's not the most reliable brain, is it? Um, but yeah, so guys, if you know, if you're throughout this, if you have any questions, um, feel free to pop them in the live chat. Um, it's great to have you all. There is just under sort of 40, about 200 people have landed in this one, which is great. Um, so that's amazing to see. Um, and as we go through the webinar, uh, you can drop it if, you, if you've got stuff to do. That's absolutely fine. You can come back to it on the YouTube channel, so it will be available. And throughout this, as I said, just pop your Notion questions. They don't have to be about the personal website, but if you have any questions about how it could be used as a personal website, um, what we'll do is we'll touch on the personal website side of stuff. Then I'm also going to explain like how some people are using it as a road mapping tool for um, agencies and things like that. So that could be a quite a good, um, a, a useful way to project a public page out there. Um, oh, uh, the brilliant, it looks like uh, Ben's from Notions here, uh, which is great. Um, the Sven and Planning Nerd, I'm gonna save some of your questions for later. I'm gonna remember where that is and then we can jump into that in questions because we're only a couple of minutes away from um, popping them there. So um, Ben, who's running the Notion account, might be able to answer some of your questions depending on how available he is or how available anyone is. But uh, Notion have an amazing uh, FAQ page if you want to check it out. So that's uh, pretty cool. So guys, um, we're just a minute or two away. So uh, feel free to grab, I would say a notepad, <laughs> but open up a separate page uh, in Notion if you want to take some notes. And uh, you probably have time just to grab another little bit of cup of tea if you want to. Um, which should be good fun. So I'm excited for today's video. It should be fantastic. So we're, we're only two minutes away from uh, the time. So maybe we're fine in starting. I think it's okay to start. So guys, welcome to the Notion webinar this week. Um, this is normally hosted on Facebook, uh, on the Notion Made Simple Facebook group. If you're not part of that, become part of that because it's really, really worth it. It's a Facebook group and there's over 8,000 members. Uh, there's a great wiki in there if you wanna really round up all the best posts that's been put in there. And it's really your hub for asking questions about Notion. So it's gonna be quite exciting. So feel free to join. It's in the pinned comment below this YouTube video. Uh, so you can um, go and join that. Now, today we are focusing on building a personal website in Notion. And um, like many people have built these websites that can be used inside of the Notion account and actually searchable through Google. So what I want to do to start is actually talk a little bit through the pros and cons of using Notion as a personal website. So obviously, um, I was explaining before, some people may be using this as they've just finished college or university and they're actually looking for jobs or and they actively want to have a website. But sometimes when you're, you know, you have a website, it can be quite expensive to run. Now, I'm a big fan of applications like Squarespace. We use that for the Keep Productive website. Um, but as you can imagine, it's expensive. And if you're a student, maybe a professional or someone that's moving careers, whatever sort of situation you're in, you may want a quick website to get up. Um, and Notion could be your answer. Now, we're actually going to touch on a few features and experiences, and we're actually going to build a personal website today for myself. Um, maybe we're going to put myself up for a job or something like that. Um, but it's going to be a good way to show you how you could potentially utilize it. Now, just to be clear, the pros are that it's easily be accessible. So, for example, if you are on the go, you could, for example, edit your Notion website and then go and update some information that's there. So it can easily be updated. And every time somebody goes on that page, you've got the freshest version of that website. So that's one of the tricky things with the major applications now is that there aren't great mobile applications for them. And up updating them is not as easy as that. So for example, adding a new header, adding a new file, adding a new bit of information, a new image can easily be done on mobile as well as the web very fast. So you can be more nimble with your personal website. 
there are obviously some limitations to the nimbleness of it. You won't be able to maybe have as much feature set as say the websites like Squarespace or Wix. However, you will have uh, a lot of flexibility with some of the width changes and also images, uh, headers, also the different types of text formatting that you can add like toggles and things like that. So it's a great opportunity for people to get started. I think it's a really, really, uh, you know, like really good one because like you're just getting started for free and it's, it's a very fast way to do it. So, you know, you're probably wondering, you know, Francesco, what does a, a, a Notion website look like? And I'm actually gonna show you uh, one that Carson Jones created. So let me just go over to this page. I hope you all can see it. <laughs> I hope it's all appearing because I'm so new to this software, but it seems to be working well at the moment. So this is Carson's personal website. It's great because it's very simple um, and he's kept it very simple at the moment, but it means he can update or even create blog posts inside this without having to you know, go through like a CMS process, which is quite heavy. And for example, he can include all the relevant information he needs. For example, he, on his website, he has these Notion tips for teams, um, which should be loading. Uh, let's just go back. Um, tips for teams. There we go. Um, and you can see here that, you know, he's created a blog post pretty instantly without having to do too much work uh, in terms of like uploading the big SEO updates and things like that. So it's an opportunity not just for you to present your own information and sort of sell yourself, but it's an opportunity to actually have the opportunity to, you know, file some more information uh, and uh, get your sort of brand and, and post blogs within Notion, which is pretty cool. So um, as I said, during this, we jump in and the many questions you have. Um, I'm going to be answering them from Sven's um, just below what Torrens comment on the second brain is. And uh, I'll answer them in the second part of this, um, depending on how we flow into this video. But it's really great to have you and I'm looking forward to dive in. So let's dive in. If you're part of the if you're not part of the Facebook group, I applaud you to check it out. Implore you, implore you to check it out. So here we are. This is the new page that we created. It's so very simple. So you can see this is uh, a new website. I just literally created a brand new page. So I called it new website. I'm actually gonna get rid of this icon and get rid of the title. So as I said, I, I'm, I'm gonna be creating this for myself. So this will be quite interesting in how I set it up. But so for example, you might wanna start it like Carson saying, I'm Francesco. Or you may actually want to start it in a, a similar format to a CV. So you could start, it with your full name right there. Now, one of the things that I think is pretty cool is obviously the emoji. You can add your own emoji if you wanted to. Um, that could be a good way in getting started. You could add something like, you could even add the website logo, that's uh, the, the website emoji. But the one thing that I think would be quite useful for you, especially to get your sort of face out there on your personal website is to choose a picture. Now I do have a picture in mind um, on, here somewhere, there it is. Hopefully it will uh, sort of position well. So that's being uploaded in the background and it should appear in a moment as a image that is viewable here. It's quite a big file, so I think it will take a moment or two. There we go. Now you can see there, that's a photo of me. That's a good starting point because they're gonna open up like this. It's also going to be the favor con of the page, which definitely makes it more viewable. The one sort of flaw there is that you can't zoom in, but at the moment, you know, if you had a fairly decent profile photo of yourself, for example, I could actually upload a better one that might be more suitable. So I could go July profile. And uh, I'm sure I got a profile photo lying around. Um, I could even have this one here uh, that has me nice and clear. And you can see it's uploading there. It's just because I'm streaming quite heavily that um, it's uh, being a little bit slow. And if you want to sort of moderate that a little, you could go into canva.com, which is a great website and centralize it before you necessarily upload it. You could even as well uh, make the edges transparent so that, or make white edges so that you can have this circle as your profile photo, which could be a good start. Now, if you wanted to, you could add a cover. Now, naturally you'll get uh, some of the pre-selected covers, but in this case, you'd go to Unsplash and uh, I could say, uh, you know, 
Devon, the area that I'm from. I could choose one of the landscapes. I actually don't, it doesn't feel like any of these are in Devon, but I'm going to click this one. So you could reflect where you're from, your branding, anything like that, um, which could be cool. So that's something that you could potentially do. So I've got, you know, I've got my, um, my header there. I've got my profile photo. I've got my name. You know, it could be interesting to start adding a uh, little bit of a sort of starter to get people interested in what this page is even about. So I think a good way to make the text stand out is using a call out. And you can create a call out here. It's, it's almost like this sort of gray box. I'm just going to zoom in slightly here. Um, it's just sort of like this gray box that makes your text like sort of bold out. And it's almost like it's almost like a explainer box more than it is anything else. So if I go here and I say, uh, you know, tick here, say, uh, I'm Francesco. And welcome to my personal website. So it could be a nice little friendly starting point. Now, the thing you could do is you could go ahead and use the slash command to create a divider to quickly just be able to sort of separate that text from there. And below, you can begin to start adding some more details. Now let's just hop back to what Carson's look like, because I think that's a, a really good demonstration of uh, what a, the postman's come. <laughs> what, uh, I doubt you even guys heard that. Um, what a good way and a good setup could look like. So Carson's got a little bit about this company. He's kept it very simple, which I quite like. He's got his latest post up here and he's also got his email and social media to get in touch. And down here has also got the workplace almost as a footer and some recent posts, as well as an image of one of the company's image. So you could go about doing it like that if you wanted to like customize it to the company um, that you're working for. Um, and that could be a good way to make sure to utilize it. So uh, that's an opportunity that you can do. Um, or you can you know, make pages for separate experiences. For example, if you're doing this for a business, um, you know, your own coffee shop or an agency you run, you can have a contact us page inside of here, which will actually go and create. And you can have a map um, that actually selects where your, you know, your business is, which is quite cool. So there's, there's many different ways you can do it. In this case, I'm actually going to do it for myself. So I'm going to keep it fairly simple um, and hopefully sort of run into a few of the key bits of information people might need to know about me. So let's go ahead and do that. So uh, let me just uh, make sure that I've got the page loaded up. Sorry, guys, I'm, I'm still getting used to this software, but it's actually really good. I'm liking it. So there we go. <laughs> We're back on this page. Right. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a nice heading to. I think this is quite uh, a nice sort of bold statement. I could say uh, my details. And uh, I'm also going to add another heading. And I'm going to go with uh, photo uh, portfolio. And I'll explain what that is in a moment. So I'm going to go ahead and put these side by side because this is a nice sort of starting point. They're looking, you know, when the the, the person who's interested in you lands here, um, they're not just looking at, you know, the detail side of stuff, but they're also looking at the portfolio as they land. So I'm going to add some dividers. I think dividers are a great way to sort of point people's attention in different spots. So for the details, I'm going to keep it very, very simple and add my email here. We're going to add a contact us page in a minute. Um, and I'm going to make sure that's pinned underneath here, making sure that it stretches uh, well enough. And I'm also going to put a phone number. This is actually my phone number, guys. I'm just randomly typing in. So do not call this number because else you may pick up some randomer in the UK. Um, and there you go. You can already start adding some details there. So the other thing you could do is if you wanted to, you could actually make this a little bit more interactive. So here, you can actually turn these into toggles. And this could be a good way for you to be able to, you know, reference why you'd be emailing me. So for example, uh, for contacts about press, then the best time to email me is 4pm. I don't know. And you can add some relevant information. I clear my inbox twice a day. I hope that's okay. But it gives the person landing on the website an opportunity to interact and open up 
these little sort of toggles, which is quite nice. And if I wanted to as well, really customize it, I could add some uh, you know, orange background. So if I go to color, orange background, then I can make that, um, just gone ahead and got rid of that, but I can make that uh, very nice there. So the other thing I could do as well is uh, just below here, I could also add a file. And this could be a good chance to add your CV if you have one. So for example, I could be like, uh, I'll find a CV from donkeys ago. Um, let's see if I got any, let's see. Um, all right, let's just upload this file. I have no idea what it is. It looks like an old piece of coursework that for college, but you can add your CV down here, which is really cool. So somebody could click into it and find out more details about themselves. Now, the, I think one of the best ways obviously in a website is to sort of express who you are. You may have a video, you may have a bit of content that might make yourself stand out and sort of talk about yourself. So you can add a video here very easily just by using the video function that allows you to embed anything from Vimeo to YouTube. But I'm actually gonna add an image and I'm gonna add that image that I did, what, did want to upload a minute ago. So uh, let me find. Uh, the downloads area. Uh, sorry about this, guys. It's been a little bit fiddly. So uh, let's find the downloads page. And uh, let's find that photo of me. There we go. So you may want to add this one because it's a nice image. And the great thing you can do is you can even add, uh, once it's uploaded, you can add some captions just below it. So this could be a good way to be like, this is me and you know my branding. So you've got some basic details here. So you might want to actually change it to like basic information. Maybe I don't, maybe in this case, I don't want to have a portfolio, although I will explain how you can use a gallery function in a minute to, for example, if you're creative to utilize that, but you could, for example, say my story. And just below here, you could, uh, you know, add a caption. You could say, uh, this is me at Jam London 2019. But down here, you can start a story. You can say, uh, you know, hi, my name's Francesco. Uh, I'm, I'm a passionate creator at Keep Productive. You know, and you get an idea about this. You can get the idea, the concept is very easy. The good thing is throughout this, you can link up stuff. So that's very useful. So for example, you can link up uh, the website. So if I went to, link up the website, you know, it's really easy to do. I could also color text if I wanted to. Uh, if I wanted this text to be a uh, different color, then I can do that just by making sure the text here. So if I wanted that to be blue, so I can really go about customizing the different color options a lot. So for example, I could select these and make them blue as well. So you can actually make this uh, a lot more sort of interactive, um, and really easy to explain. So up here, the other thing I'm gonna show you is, uh, I think you should be able to see, is you can do a few different things that changes the way people see this page. So when they land on it, they could see it in the default text that is already viewable on here, or they could see it in a serif font, which might be more on brand for you, or even a mono font, which helps you to see it in more of a techie style. Um, but we're going to stick with the default font. You can also make the text smaller, which means you get more real estate when the people land on it. And you can also do a full width if you wanted to. So that's uh, full width and that's half width. So you can actually uh, make this um, you know, more interactive. If you are working with an agency, say you are an agency and you're looking to create a personal website, using Notion, then you can use the page lock, which means that it locks the page for everyone else, which is pretty cool. So they don't have access to modifying it or you know doing things like that. And if you want to, the one thing that I think would be quite useful for people is to be able to export it in an A4 format in PDF. And that can be a good way to like explain your CV. If you've created this sort of story about yourself and the basic information, it could be a fun way to print out the CV and actually give it to them in person if you wanted um, to sell more about yourself. And it, it looks cool as well. Um, and I, I feel the, um, I would just remove the lock on it. I feel the, uh, and I'll take the small text off. I feel the CV could be a good way, that could be a neat way to actually just sort of utilize uh, the, the space. So guys, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna, gonna pause and uh, I'm gonna take a look at some of your questions you may be having and uh, 
take a sip of cup of tea. So let's just go back to what Sven said. Um, Sven, he said, I'm actually running them for a personal workspace and I'm actually still a bit confused. So when it comes to personal workspaces or, or workspaces, uh, each workspace has what's called uh, block limits. Um, for example, if you're on the free plan, you have a block limit of a thousand blocks per workspace. So um, maybe I can demonstrate it to you guys. Hopefully I can. Uh, let me go and find. Um, I really like this software, but it's taking a bit of time. So for example, if I go over here, you can see that here we uh, have uh, a few workspaces. So I have a personal plan here. I have a team plan here and a free plan. And each workspace has their own plan. So, um, you know, if you're sort of limited, uh, you can create a new workspace each time you were to create a new project. But I, I like to keep it like Francesco and keep productive here is fairly uh, easy to sort of understand, uh, at least for me anyway. <laughs> um, so uh, maybe I went too far. Okay, so Sven said, will the webinar be added later for viewing? Yes, it will. Um, that's absolutely fine. If you have to dash off, that's brilliant. Um, you know, um, come back and it should be on the YouTube channel by a couple of hours, I think. It, it normally auto posts it. Um, so also um, we have a question. Uh, though, so the planning then says, using Notion as a database on the centralized process and information in my crazy, uh, my small agency, when I want to say crazy. Um, there was a comment, can Notion export information? It can, uh, it depends on what information you want to get out of Notion. For example, if you have a table or a database, you can export that into a CSV format. So you can get that data out of Notion, which is great news. Um, we have on the subject of Notion, to write and publish a website. Is there a way to do tables, not database tables, but rather a grid to control where content is seen on the page? I'm not entirely sure what you mean by that, um, but please do sort of, if you're still here, please do clarify, because I think I know what you mean. For example, if you're looking at like a gallery view, that could be quite cool. Uh, I'll show you how we use, how the gallery view can be used to maybe express um, useful bits of information and things like that. So Furkan put, tried some habit tracker apps on iOS, but ended up making my own table in Notion. Currently tracking 11 habits for about 1.5 months. That's awesome to hear. Now, Torrens put a couple of comments. Um, he didn't know there was a group wiki, which is awesome. If you're new uh, to the stream, you can check out the Facebook group below, which is a really good resource. Um, and also, he's also stated that the new update is being um, much better. Um, so yeah, I mean, I know it's definitely iOS improvements at least. Uh, Luca put, I'm using Notion on a daily basis, personally and for my school team. That's fantastic. Um, it's great for students as well. Sven had to leave, um, awesome. Uh, you know, you can watch it later, definitely. And using Notion as expanded CV does sound like a good idea, Torren. Yeah, I think that could be a cool way for people to sort of be sent. You could just send people to like a CV to download instantly and they could save that copy on their side, which is quite cool. Um, and there was a question, create that site in Notion. How is the security on this site? I will, I'll explain the sort of sharing abilities as we roll into the end of the video. Um, and my good friend, Scott, has put well done Cheza on 100K. Um, so thanks, mate. Uh, we need to catch up <laughs> in person. Um, I need to either come down where you are or you need to come where I am. Um, that would be sick. So uh, let's jump back into the, the actual Notion side of stuff. Um, if you have any questions, again, you can pop them in the, uh, yeah, the, the live chat. Yeah, you always tend to lose your words when you're doing these things. Uh, it doesn't seem to make any sense for me to do that. So let's, uh, let's do two things. Let's go ahead and create a contact us page. So let's say you're like an agency or anything like that, and you want to be able to have some useful pages for companies to come in and learn more about you or reach out to you. Um, then you, I'm going to go ahead and copy this header. And below, I'm going to have um, more pages. And I'm also going to create a brand new page. And what I'm going to do here is call it Contact Me. And I'm going to go ahead and add the icon of telephone and a lovely red telephone. 
So here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep it very simple. Um, I'm going to copy the information we created on that last page. So here uh, into this contact me page. But what I'm going to do that's slightly different is I'm going to go ahead and add a Google Maps embed. Now, I'm going to go onto the internet just very briefly and find a Google Maps link. So you, what you do need to find is a Google Maps link to uh, grab. So once you grab the Google Maps link, you paste it in there and you press embed. And as you can see, this slowly appears. So obviously, the business is not based in the entirety of Devon, but you could do that there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to align it next to it. Now, there's one thing that uh, Notion is slowly getting better at, is it's a little bit tricky to sort of land everything uh, in the right sort of way. But as you can see, oh, as you can see, uh, wait a sec, guys. It muddled up there. As you can see, it uh, obviously creates that lovely interactive map. So people who are watching this um, or actually going onto your own page can be like, oh, that's where they're based. Um, and they can go and, and find out more details. So that's a neat way to create the Contact Us page. Uh, and you can do that for your business or anything you want. But how do you go ahead and create a new gallery page? Because, uh, uh, you know, portfolio page, because you may want to share if you're a creative individual or someone who, you know, maybe writes or anything like that um, to actually be, take advantage of that. So in this case, I'm going to find that art, like a nice like art palette. And I'm going to go ahead and create a database as the entire thing. So I'm going to get, get rid of these. And uh, you can go ahead and create a new um, card. So the card could be absolutely anything. So for example, if you'd be like, um, maybe I want to share my, my thumbnail skills. I don't know. And uh, I could say it's for YouTube as a marketer. I could say, you know, I could add a bit more detail like, um, uh, I don't know, um, the tool I created it on. So you could be like sharing your, your skill for the tool. And uh, what I could do there is uh, go ahead below and add an image, choose the image and add the thumbnail maybe that I created today, which wasn't very good. Um, but there you go. So I've got a very basic little sort of gallery going on. So what I'm gonna do in the gallery view is make sure the page content is shown. So you can see that pops up there. Um, you can see the card size is medium. Maybe you want it large. If you've got less content, more content, small, and you can even do the fit image, but I wouldn't re necessarily recommend that. You can also tag the skills that were useful. And remember with each of the tags, you can turn them into the different and relevant colors. So these are obviously like canvas are green branding. So people can start to see, oh, he's, he has uh, some skills at YouTube. Maybe Canva, you know, he has some skills at using Canva. I don't know why anybody hire me if I had skills at Canva, though. Really, that's, uh, you know, it's very basic. <laughs> but, um, you know, you get the idea. You could start adding more and more. But one of the cool things you can do with this is, for example, if you had, um, you know, let me just pause and find a useful article that I may have written, uh, wrote, written, written, on my written on my media, um, on my Medium account that I might want to clip maybe it's about why modular software will rule, then what I can do is I can use the Notion Web Clipper and uh, make sure that I've choosed, chosen, oh my God, it's awful English. Um, and I can go and I will explain how this is done in a second. So I will just make sure that it is portfolio, portfolio, bear with me a moment guys and then I'll explain it in a bit more detail. It's just a technical side of stuff. Okay, let me just cut to this lovely page. Um, so we're on the web, right? And maybe I want to be able to share this article that I wrote as an example of my portfolio work. So you can do this very easily. We're using the Notion Web Clipper. If I press save and I go to and type in portfolio, drum roll, there we go. The portfolio appears and I press save page. So the great thing is if I go back <laughs> to this notion portfolio, 
it starts to save. So I can say here, I can go in while it takes a moment to load and I could say um, writing. Um, and I could say the skill, the tool is medium and I could change the color to gray because that's a site of medium. So you can start to see, you can add not just stuff that you've added into uh, your notion manually, but you can actually start adding um, stuff through the web. So that could be a very cool sort of reference. And the great thing is if you want it to be like and uh, select it, make a new section that you want to show off maybe uh, your sort of best work, you could go ahead and add uh, linked, oh, sorry, uh, slash linked uh, database. Or you could actually link to a page if you wanted to. So for example, in this case, uh, you might be like, um, why modular software will rule. So they can click in here and they could find the article instantly. So it saves you all that work of having to upload something. So that could be a good way to sort of highlight good things about your experience. So that's a good way to use the gallery function. So I'm just gonna sort of pause and then we'll dive into how you could use it as a roadmap um, for a personal website and uh, answer any questions if there are any questions. Um, let me try and find the actual page first. I, I think I've lost, oh, I know where it is. I'll find you in a second, guys. Okay, I'm just checking if there's any more questions. So Pritham said, uh, great video so far. Enjoying it, mate. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, if you like these, I will probably host them here now because it seems to be a lot easier than I thought. Um, so you did get back to me, wild restness. Um, I'm thinking more of cell grid. Okay. Um, I'm not sure they do very well at cell grids at the moment in tables. So I doubt that's something that you could be able to do. But if you have any questions, you can email me direct, Francesco at uh, keepproductive.com. Um, okay, so uh, Torren put, I'm also, I'm also wondering how to create a traditional table in Notion rather than a, a database. Yeah, I think, so you can't necessarily create like a Excel-like table, but I will be doing a video about how you can sort of mimic it in slight fashions. This is almost an entirely new, the database is an entirely new way of doing tables. So, you know, it's going to be sort of fresh. Um, yeah, traditional tables. Wow, I, I'm interested. So this could be something that um, Notion, um, you know, pick up on actually. Uh, so we have Rem Ballet. Uh, can you link a website to a custom domain? Um, don't think you can. I'll explain in a moment about the sort of sharing abilities and how you can do that. Um, so that will be in the next, we'll do the roadmap and then the sharing abilities and then we'll call it the day on the, the we'll call it a day. It sounds like, yeah, I leave it guys. Call it a day on the, the webinar side of stuff. So Yodi said, I appreciate you doing this on YouTube since I'm not on Facebook. Oh, that's cool. Um, always good to hear feedback. Thank you, Yodi. Um, obviously like if you are on Facebook, then you can join the webinar, uh, which will be awesome. Uh, you can join the group, sorry, uh, which is pinned in a link in description. And Dennis put, how share link with friends? I can add a custom domain. Let's explain how to do that. Actually, let's let's get past the roadmap side of stuff. Unless anybody really is eager to see it, let's show you how the sharing abilities work. So let me just share the page again. So we've created this lovely, you know, really, look, I mean, I'm going to get hired from this page quite clearly. Um, so we've created this lovely area. And obviously you can write, more and more details about it. But you know, it times comes to the time of actually sharing it. So obviously you've created this in your own workspace. In this case, we've got a team one, um, which is really easy. But there's this thing called, up here called public access, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give it public access to can read. Now you can add can comment, but you might not wanna share a personal website and then have loads of people comment on it but you might want to, for example, you could have useful references, people going, um, you know, down here, for example, you could have people going and leaving uh, comments. I, why, why have I forgotten how to do this? Oh no, you can't add a comment over a video, but you could add, for example, um, you know, somebody adding a comment over the top of this and going, you know, this was awesome. He did really well. He did so well. 
So you could have people like leaving comments and then other people going, oh, what's this comment from, you know, uh, Joel, who, uh, you know, left the comment saying he did amazing at this client piece of work. So you could have that. Um, so you may want to add it to can comment. Um, but the great thing is the public access doesn't allow to edit, which means that you're sort of good to go. And as I said, if you're a team and you want to sort of lock it up, you can use the page lock. Um, but there you go. Here we go. So you can actually, I would disallow duplication as template unless you want people to save your information into their own notion. For example, if you know the team that you're looking to get the job at has notion, then you could allow duplication so they can duplicate it and add you as a card inside of their um, HR department. But that's very progressive. Um, but at the moment, I don't think you necessarily need it to be duplicated as a template. But you can add this thing called allow search engine. So this means your page will appear in search engine if it starts to rank as a page. I'm actually going to take these off. But that's how to go about public sharing. Uh, and then once you've got it, you can copy the page link and send it on to someone else. Now, one of the things here is if you copy the page link, it's going to be quite long and uh, fairly messy. So uh, the one thing you can do is actually give me a moment and uh, I'm just going to make sure that the settings are OK. Bear with me. So I'm going to get to the right page um, You can go to settings. Here we go. Let's go back into it. Da -ba -da -ba -da. So these are the settings and members area. Um, and as you can see here, you've given yourself a name to the workspace, an icon. And that's really important if you're presenting yourself. It, they'll see keep productive and then they'll see Francesco. So that's really important. You keep it really simple. So you do get a domain name. So in this case, it's notion.so slash keepproductive.co, but you can't add a custom domain, um, which is a bit of a shame at the moment. But I probably think they will add that in the future. Um, and, you know, I actually not properly explored it in, in a high level of detail, but that's a good way to get started uh, at the very least. So um, let me just check if there's anything else um, that I haven't mentioned. Um, if you wanted to, you could import stuff um, from other applications. Um, as you can see, you could import, for example, if you already had a website, you could import the layout in HTML if you built that. You could import text and markdown from useful files so you don't have to necessarily fully upload you know, CVs or things like that you've already added. You can connect to Google Docs to make it more interactive if you've got a presentation. You know, all of the other applications, uh, even Evernote, maybe you have some useful files or stuff that you've done in the past. But the other thing that you could do is if you wanted to, and this is, you know, a good way to maybe get sell, you know, sell yourself online is to be a bit more uh, sort of forward thinking when it comes to um, the way that you present yourself. So you could try what's called a Loom recording. Now, Loom is a free software that allows you to record um, you know, webcam or screen, but in a really simple way. You can download it on Mac, like Windows, and there's also a Chrome extension. But you could do a little webcam recording. It doesn't have to be that, you know, professional. You could be like, hi, my name's Francesco. Um, welcome to my website. I'm really excited for you to check out um, this, in, you know, a bit more information about me. Um, you can drop me an email. I am always happy to uh, answer any of your questions, whether it's about my work so far, et cetera. You could even start telling your story, but it gives you an opportunity to sell yourself in a bit more of a, like, honestly, the amount of people that, um, like, for example, watch some key productive videos and then meet me um, for an event or something like that, and they feel like they've got to know me a bit more. So that could be a good way to actually sort of talk through your experience and also um, sort of get people to know you before they meet you, which is quite cool. Um, so guys, uh, I'm going to pause it there. I'm going to chat with you guys for a bit, see if there's any final questions. And uh, and then what we'll do is we'll wrap up for today. Um, before we sort of wrap up, I wanted to point you guys towards the Facebook group, um, which is a really good one. The Facebook group is free to join. There's over 8,000 members and you'll find a lot of benefits from it. If you do want to check out the course, there's some useful course um, benefits. Um, and obviously, if, you, if you're a newbie to Notion, then that could be a good starting point for you. So let's uh, answer a few questions. Um, Fur can put, thank you, Francesco, for your videos. I have to run two. Cheers to you and the Notion team. Um, no, thank you for stopping by, Fur can. Um, and uh, I hope to see you soon. Uh, Rembale, thanks, mate. 
Uh, Craig said, sorry to join late, just, just wondering, new icon, uh, I love it, uh, but uh, the new icon couldn't stand out if I put, amongst others, I suggest colorizing the V. Ah, you mean the new uh, Key Productive logo. I know what you mean, but we tried it and uh, it doesn't sort of look nice. I'll, I'll maybe I'll share some versions with you. Um, Fox Caudry said, can we link to Notion pages to custom domains yet? Not at the moment, not to my knowledge, which is a bit of a pain. Um, and Van, you've just found the channel. That's so awesome. Uh, it's great to have you. Thank you. Um, I just found out about Notion too. This is very cool. I think you'll have a lot of fun. This is like really not the best video to start with. <laughs> like I, I think you should definitely try um, other videos that we put out. Uh, Torren, I hope Notion bring in human readable URLs, especially as more people create websites in Notion instead of SEO unfriendly ones they currently use. Yeah, I think people are more going towards this model of stuff, which is quite cool. Um, and Brack said, uh, hey, Francesco, I moved to Notion because your channel like a year ago. Do you think the Android app will be fast enough that I won't need to use Google Keep for quick note taking? So they've actually released two new, uh, well, they've announced two new things. So the first is that they will be working on the Android application. They've also rolled out updates to iOS, Windows, and um, Mac uh, on faster versions. And they do seem a lot faster, if I'm honest, um, which is good. Um, and they've also, if you go onto their Twitter, they've just previewed like this um, Google Keep, no, well, quick note taking functionality, allowing you to take really quick notes, which is quite cool. So um, yeah, I mean, check that out, Brack. I think it'd be a cool way to, uh, you know, get excited about what's to come for Notion. Um, right. So guys, if you want any questions answered, this is a good time because I'm going to just spend five more minutes answering questions. Um, if you have to dash, that's amazing. Uh, I really appreciate you stopping by today. Honestly, it was great to have you. We'll probably do the same scheduled webinar next week, same time, um, and you can be here to enjoy that one. So uh, I hope to have you there. Uh, so let's go through these final ones. Um, uh, Ege, uh, I apologize again if that's wrong. How can I shorten that URL I got? Uh, yeah, that is a massively long URL. And if you've just copied it, Ege, that's like, it's quite long. So I use a site called bit.ly, which I find really useful to shorten URLs and quickly post them. So if you want to do that, um, you can, but at the moment there's no way of doing it really fine-tunely, fine-tunely. Um, Van, um, I found this live cast because I was watching your tour videos to learn how others use this tool. Oh, that's so good. There are so many great ones and we do have some more coming soon. So um, do stay tuned because I think you'll find them so good, Van. Um, thanks for thanks for watching all of them. Um, have you watched Kylie Stewart's one? That is a good one. I recommend it. So I'm gonna, again, I'm going to butcher your name, Kwam Arul. Hey, just want to ask. I'm using Notion for some to-do list for myself and some freelance projects. Do you think I should purchase Notion? It really depends on how uh, aggressively you're using it. If you say I'm still in the free plan and and uh, not using the amount of the block limit. But I can imagine with your freelance projects expanding, it's gonna sort of you know grow, especially with the board functionality. For example, if you're creating boards that have client information and you start adding images, files, documents, maybe you start sharing it with your clients, you'll actually end up filling that a thousand block limit. So what I would do is each month I would review your block limit and how far it's growing and uh, maybe that will be a good indication of how sort of progressively, you know, you're going to be using it. Okay, so um, Torren, uh, I currently use standard notes for quick note taking, as it takes over eight seconds for the Notion Android app to open. Uh, yeah, th that's something that um, I'm just checking the name. Brack uh, mentioned above. He said he uses Google Keep. They actually said that they're going to be working on this and the Android application, uh, which is great news. Um, Torin, if you're not following them on Twitter, they're like really good on Twitter about announcing features that are, they're working on. So uh, the Jade wants, I uh, always see you in the comments. Thank you. Uh, I've only just logged on. I've missed this. Will it be available to view? Yes, it will be. Um, should be available just after. Okay, guys, I'll give it uh, a minute or two. If you have any more questions, um, pop them here. I'll sort of loiter um, and see if there are any more. 
and then I'll sort of <laughs> end the day with an, a, a nice run, I think. Um, uh, great, thanks for your explanation, Quam Roll. Um, yeah, if, if you wanna email me, uh, I'll put it in the chat. Uh, probably. So if you wanna email me, cause I used it for quite a, like a considerable period of time for freelancing. So maybe I'll have like some useful ways of using it, but just email me and I'll sort of share like, and maybe if you share your screen, uh, obviously uh, just share your screen and I'll like take a look at how you're using it and and whether it, um, you know, whether it looks like you're gonna progress past the plan, but you know, it's really hard to tell sometimes. Um, but yeah, just email me if you have any questions. Okay. Um, guys, if you, did you like this webinar? Cause like, uh, you know, it's the first time I'm using Zoom for a webinar. Like I literally got to set up like yesterday afternoon and I feel like it's a lot better. I feel like it's fairly smooth apart from a few of the sort of hiccups. I could do a few more like presentation side of stuff. That would be quite cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, it could be cool. Um, okay, Torin put, that was some delay as the email appeared in chat um, before we saw you typed it. Ah, okay. So it's a little bit slow. That's a bit of a pain. Okay, Roger, thanks, Francesco. Great job. Uh, glad you enjoyed it. Van, thanks so much for all your uh, doing on helping others with Notion. Ah, that's so good to hear. Um, Van, pop me an email because it'd be interesting um, to hear how you're progressing with Notion. And uh, I can also point you towards a few other people in the community, like Marie um, K, uh, K H E, who does some great content. So just pop me an email. Um, I'm more than happy to help. So yeah, brilliant. We'll we'll wrap up in a second. Thank you so much for dropping by today. Um, Brack, great to see you. Um, Cramerall, Ege, um, et cetera. Everyone who's popped by today. Thank you so much, DJ once and, uh, and Roger. Thanks guys. I will talk to you very soon. Have a great Wednesday evening. Yeah, Wednesday evening. Talk to you soon guys. Cheers, bye. Do I want to? Are you sure you want to?